Stop quoting jobs to make sure you get the job. Stop pricing it to make sure that you get it. When you do that, and you're because you know you know what your competition is charging. If you, if I go a little bit lower, I know for sure that I'll get it. This is the worst time of the year to possibly be thinking that or doing that. That's stupid. You only have so many slots in your schedule, and if you book yourself up with low profit work, and now you're on the hook and you got to do it. When you're in the middle of that job, you're going to be kicking yourself, and you're going to keep doing it again and again and again. Right now is the busiest season. Everybody wants work done. All the customers, everything's overgrown, everybody needs service, everything's dirty, everybody needs maintenance right now, and they're willing to pay a premium. If you come in at a low price, you're only screwing yourself, and you're gonna be the one that's sitting there jumping over dollars to get the nickels. You're gonna be sitting there eating a chicken bone, starving, stuck, handcuffed to the wall doing it, while you're watching filet mignon go down the river and there's nothing that you can do about it. There's nothing you're gonna be, and it's gonna be your fault and nobody's gonna care. And the customer is not gonna care either. Nobody cares, nobody cares. It's all about what you negotiate up front. I just did another landscape quote. It was a trimming quote. 850 to trim the ornamental trees and burning bush shrubs on this lady's property and 1500 to trim up and trim the dead out of the locust trees. It was 23.50. And they got a couple more quotes. They got a quote right before me this morning. They said, well, this person is gonna do 600 to trim all the ornamental trees and shrubs and 900 to trim up the locust trees. And I was like, what's that? 1500 versus 2300? You know why? I know exactly why because the other guy who's in the same shoes that you're in or it might even be you he's not calculating owner's profit what do you mean owner's profit you don't deserve to make an owner's profit you greedy bastard how dare you you want to make profit how dare you you are, oh, you're you're gonna go to hell, you greedy bastard. You should charge the customer just enough to do the job. That's the problem. <laughs> if you don't make any profit, then in the end, when you're sitting there with a broke down truck and a blown transmission and you don't have any money to fix it, and now you're shit out of luck, nobody's gonna care and nobody's gonna come and save you. The customer's not gonna care, they're not gonna come and save you. Nobody's gonna save you. Nobody's going to save you. So I know what the other guy quoted. He was quoting thinking, I want to quote this to make sure that I get the job. Because I know what the other guys are charging. So if I lower my price a little bit, then I'll get it for sure. All right, you're going to get it for sure. And then you're going to be sitting there handcuffed to the wall, eating a chicken bone, watching all this flame and yawn go by. It's like... What's up, this is Keith Kelfus, and in this video I want to talk about pricing and all the painful hard lessons that I've learned and I'm still learning. But anyways, it's all like, like there's droves, zombies of customers, and they're all wearing tuxedos, and they got the silver dish, like you don't know what's inside, is it filet mignon, is it a chicken bone, right? And they're all lined up, and you got to go through all this time, all these customers, to get them to open to find out that they're just crumpled up, dirty $1 bills. And there's so many of them. It's like being so swarmed in one dollar scratch off lottery tickets and you're scratching them all and they're all losers and a couple of them are like two and three and five bucks how do you get the twenty dollar winners how do you get the how do you get the ones that there's there's a hundred dollar bill under the tray how do you sort and sift and learn and how to and smell and sift out and qualify the customers and know when to say no even when you i mean i'm gonna say no learn when to say Whenever I make these videos and I actually watch them back, side note, I go, oh, I should have said that right there. I messed that thing up. And uh, it's like, you know, I don't sit here for an hour writing it all out and I just don't have the time to do that right now. But anyways, how do you qualify the customer to make sure you're getting the good jobs? You know, you might have your schedule already all booked out and you're still booking low profit work. You only have so many spaces in your schedule. Are you gonna fill it with work that you wanna do or work that you don't wanna do? And 
like right now we're booked out a month and a half uh, with all landscape jobs and trimming and window cleaning and stuff like that and I'm still upset I'm not upset it's just that of all the calls that are coming in and I'm qualifying no 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 because I've been down that path how many times do you have to go down that road down that dark alley how many times do you have to suffer where you're out there dripping in sweat and a one-day job turns into a two-day job a two-day job turns into a four-day job and now you're working for free because you didn't calculate all the stuff that comes into play when and how much it actually costs you to do that job I really like the the day rate thing I said you know what my day rate is now if it's landscape jobs like it's it's 1500 a day right but it's a minimum of 850 right because we have to do 810 per day for me to make everything work um oh, I was supposed to turn right there so it just depends on what we're doing and what's involved but so so when you give the customer the whole quote before you open up your big fat mouth and before you actually submit the quote reverse engineer the math and just do some simple math and say, wait, 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 how much do I have, to, how much do I not only have to, but want to make off this, this job? If it's only going to take me a half a day, can I make it to another job on the second half? Can I squeeze two jobs or three or four or five in? If you're doing lawn care, it's probably totally different, right? It's probably about route density and pricing for sure. Oh, look at this. I love birds. There's a lot of these in Michigan, Canadian geese. But, um, I wish I had a loaf of bread. So look at the math again and say, how much do I want and need to make off this, whether it's a whole day or half a day, and can I make it to another job or to the, the second half of the day and make it all work? Because if you don't calculate that stuff, one little tiny mistake will screw you over and you won't make any money. So it's either you make, you make the money you want or you don't make any money. And one other thing that's hitting me hard, oh, that's good money good what is good money until you're living in the houses these big ass mini mansions that this is just my opinion that you're doing the property maintenance for okay you're cleaning these people's windows you're doing their property maintenance you're cutting their lawn until you're living in that house you're not making good money do you have the best health insurance do you have life insurance policy do you have home insurance do you have a Roth IRA, I'm sorry, do you have a Roth IRA that you're maxing out? I actually opened one up and then I closed it back down because I realized it was too early for me to even do that. What do you mean you don't have, I have a Roth, all the guys in the comments are going, I have a Roth IRA. That means I'm better than you because <laughs> I have a Roth IRA. <laughs> I want, them, I want guys to make videos and post all over Facebook all their failures and all their fears and how they stay up at night in anxiety worrying about their lives and their businesses and if what they're doing is right or wrong and how do they fix the problem. The truth. Because this whole social media thing is like you're only supposed to, excuse me, my nose is just, like you know how Gary Vaynerchuk, I love Gary Vaynerchuk, he's super confident, the guy's a multi-millionaire, he's got an like 800 employees in this huge agency. He gets paid like $80,000 to do keynote speeches. And everything that comes out of his mouth is like, he seems like he knows it all about everything he's talking about. And he's so super confident. And it's very easy to believe everything that he's saying. But what about, what about the truth? What about... Because it, what I'm saying that for is you can feel totally alone if you're going through frustrations and through failure and you're repeatedly underquoting jobs and you're out there killing yourself not making enough money and you can't even afford to fix your broken down truck. You can't even afford to have all the things that I was talking about yet you're out there killing yourself. Is there something wrong with you? Do you have a mental disorder? Are you, are you just not intelligent? Or are you just like everybody else who's afraid to admit that that's the truth? Uh, what they're going through as well. Are you part of the masses? Dude, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. And the only thing that's getting me a little bit closer is further clarifying and having discernment. Look up discernment in Wikipedia. You know, look it up on the internet, what it means. The ability to make distinction, the ability to see something and proactively look at it before it even happens because it all comes down to the sale 
when you close a deal here and you negotiate this price, everything that comes after that, that's after that's after the fact. It's too late now. Now you got to eat it all the way down the line until it's finished. What did you agree to all the way back here? Because you can't backpedal. You can't backpedal in business or with customers. So whatever you agree to, that initial price in the beginning, now you got to put your foot in your mouth. So that's why it's very important to be cognizant. And I think the only way you get to that point where you go, ah, I don't care if I drove all the way out here to give you a quote, or I tried my best to qualify you on the phone and still drove out here. And now I really want the job and I realize I'm not going to get it because it's not the price that I need to make. It, like, it's got to be like, you got to be willing to lose everything. It's like, I'm not coming down a dollar. I'm not because I know this is what I need to make. And I've been down that road so many times that if I do this again, Murphy's law, what can go wrong will go wrong. It will take longer than expected. You know what? You're going to lock down. You're going to give the customer a deal so you can get the job. And guess what? The morning of that job, it's going to rain. So you're going to have to reschedule or show up late. Then what's going to happen? Then when your guys are going to get sick, they're going to call in or they're going to show up super late. Then a piece of equipment's going to break down. It's going to happen. Then you're going to get all the way to the job and you're going to realize, oh my God, I forgot I was so scrambling and rushing that I forgot the trailer lock keys or something, right? And then, so all the things that can go wrong, you have to build all that into your plan. Somebody said in another video that I posted, they were like, what do you mean? You charge your customer for mistakes that haven't even happened? You're a piece of crap. I'm not charging the customer for a mistake that hasn't happened. All I'm saying is that you can tell the customer whatever the price is, as long as you're clear and specific with them and they know exactly the value and the quality that they're getting for the price and they want, they agree to pay it and they sign on the dotted line. That doesn't have anything to do with morals or anything. That's, I think it's very moral and upright and up forth to stand up for yourself and say that, you know, um, Here's the one thing I said. Um, I will add a fifth extra fifty dollars onto this quote. What if I break a sprinkler head and I have to spend, you know, hour and a half going and getting the parts and to fix it? I'm not charging the customer for a broken broken sprinkler head that hasn't been broken. I'm just padding an extra fifty dollars on the quote to make up for a mistake. Because if you stick a shovel in a customer's ground and you're doing something or installing sod or something, and you happen to break a sprinkler head. Should you eat every single sprinkler head? They're not paying. Well, what you're doing is you're you're creating wiggle room. You're padding. And it, why does that? Why is that morally wrong? What the fuck are the people that are doing for a living that are living in all these big ass mini mansions? Are they morally right or are they morally wrong? Because they're living in these huge ass houses and there's BMWs in their garage and all their kids are in like soccer and gymnastics and their kids' colleges are paid for. What do they do for a living? Are they so much better than you or, or you or I? Huh? Are they immoral? Because the only type of people that I hear that talk about stuff like that are people that are flat broke. I'm not talking about, I, I believe Maritime Admiralty Law created corporations to correct people, uh, to, to pr protect business owners from loss and liability. That's why it's a limited liability corporation. So you're not exposed to unlimited liability in your personal assets. And I, I don't even want to get into that. All I want to say is that I lost my train of thought. I also got passionate in a video and I started yelling. It was like five videos ago. And some dude's like, you need a mental evaluation. There's something wrong with you. And I'm like, oh my God, do I need a mental evaluation? Because I'm so passionate. Like, it doesn't matter what you say. If you get passionate on YouTube, oh, I'm done with this video. I'm going to the next quote. God, that's my rant. Later.